the other two are physically present. Welcome, uh, Gramenos. Um, you will be given the floor immediately, just uh, to say a few words. Uh, this is a panel on uh, the Eastern Mediterranean today, on the current challenges that uh, Eastern Mediterranean is facing in terms of uh, climate change, energy transition, uh, pollution, and all the other relevant uh, issues. So it is a broad uh, scope uh, panel. We have uh, three distinguished speakers, and I would like uh, to start with uh, Gramenos uh, Mastroieni, who is uh, the senior deputy secretary general uh, of the Union for the Mediterranean, an international organization established in uh, Barcelona, uh, Spain, in charge of uh, all the Mediterranean globally uh, issues. Uh, Gramenos, uh, it is a pleasure to, to have you with us. The floor is yours. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let me apologize for my informality. I am on an unexpected and complicated trip, but for me, it was really important to be with you. Uh, don't take it as a criticism. Actually, it was uh, agreed with Mr. Kremlis, uh, but uh, I would run a setting the scene that I can define as not only Eastern, in the sense that also representing the only international organization that has a competence over the Mediterranean region, all the others fragmented in two different groups, the United Nations do, OCDE does. Uh, it's, it's only natural. I think that when we talk about these issues, we need to understand who we are, where we are, and how we are uh, together. And to do this, uh, we also need to reflect a little bit on what litter means. Uh, I will not treat litter, excuse me, for the assonance, literally. In the sense that transition to sustainable development, which is absolutely essential now to face challenges like uh, climate change, means no one left behind. And this means, of course, getting rid of plastic litter, of pollution. But it Call also from Antonio Silistable. It also means getting rid of hey. other leftovers, societal leftovers, people Francesca. left aside. It also means getting rid of economic leftovers. To do that properly, we need to understand where we are, not only Eastern and not only Mediterranean. What is the Mediterranean? The Mediterranean is the cradle of civilization. Well, it means a lot of things. It also means that it, it's the most anthropized sea in the world, but it also means that it is at the center of historical geostrategic relations. If you see the Mediterranean, it is at the crossroads of three continents. It is the place where more than 20% of international commerce is uh, transported. So what we do here is a global stake. Moreover, we are the point of convergence of the uh, most prominent threats produced by non-sustainable development. To the south of the Mediterranean, we are now witnessing the largest example of climate destabilization, which is occurring in the Sahel Band, the area of desertification, which is bringing over pressures towards the Mediterranean. To the east of the Mediterranean, we have the biggest foreseeable geostrategic threat linked with uh, uh, unsustainable development development, which is the melting, the thawing of Himalayan glaciers that could put in motion more than 500 million people, probably looking westwards toward us. So we are not only here for ourselves, and we cannot fragment ourselves into, or only fragment ourselves into different areas, different portions of uh, this uh, sea that we share. As an organization, we are trying to pursue some solutions, and they are driven by science. And science very simply tells us something. We are in front of a challenge so vast and so quick that no one around the Mediterranean, and even in Europe on its own, has enough resources to face it, not even the richest. But if we put our resources together, we can. Something was mentioned before. For instance, I talk every day with DG Energy at uh, the European Union. 
There is the objective to decarbonize Europe by 2050. Well, there is a full awareness of the fact that it is squarely impossible without counting on the renewables potential of the south shore of the Mediterranean. We need to interlink the two shores to the mutual, to the mutual benefit, but not only for the decarbonization, not only for energy sovereignty and independence, but also because an operation like this, for instance, would rebalance economic distribution, income distribution, connecting the grids. It seems quite a technical and sectorial initiative, but would actually bring a redistribution of income. This is important for justice, but this is very important to prevent instability consequences brought over by climate change. Climate change is dangerous over our region because there are ongoing conflicts because it's a sea where there are weaker and stronger communities. If we do rebalance the economies in this way, we make a very important step forward. But can we do it sectorially, looking only east, looking only west, looking only nationally? This is not possible. Let me just give uh, to conclude another example, which seems poetical, but is very, very important. Uh, we might set the way for the future of uh, sustainable development by doing something unprecedented in the Mediterranean, especially in the Mediterranean, which is sharing, sharing off everything, considering that everybody has someone to give. In the climate negotiation, there is a chapter which is kind of uh, conflictual. It's called technology transfer. And it is a source of conflicts because we intend technology transfer as something brilliant, which is transferred by those who are rich and advanced towards those who are not so much. But let's take our situation. In uh, 10 years, the climate of, the southern, of Southern Europe will be very similar to the traditional climate of North Africa. What is technology? Who has the experience, a 5,000 years old experience to manage drylands? We don't, they do in the South. If you travel along the Silk Road, you will sometimes find some uh, funny buildings called shaped, which are called yakchal, which means in Persian fridges. They were used by merchants to deposit perishable goods. Inside those buildings, the temperature is always between zero and minus four. Electricity consumption zero, even if outside is 55. If we put together all we have, east and west, north and south, nation with nation, not only we can uh, diffuse all the dangers of an unsustainable development, not only we can get rid of all that trash, which is not only material trash, but is also human trash that our current development system produces, but we will achieve something that we always struggle for and never really achieve, which is peace. A sea that exchanges in cooperation instead of competition is a Connected sea of peace. Connected to me one zero to light. Thank you very much. Well, I would like to thank uh, Gramenos uh, Mastrogeni for this uh, overview on the critical issues that uh, we are currently facing, uh, which will be exacerbated in the future. I was very worried uh, when I heard uh, that uh, our climate in the south of the Mediterranean will be... I, I think there is a technical problem which was not referred to your, referring to your presentation, Gramenos. It was not to interrupt you, but uh, you will be given the floor immediately afterwards. So I wanted to say that um, these forecasts about the increase of the temperature, and we expect in uh, Eastern Mediterranean higher increases of temperature compared uh, to the other, let's say, regions of uh, Europe and uh, of our planet is really very worrying. And in that respect, uh, it was very interesting uh, to hear uh, your example, your, uh, the best practice that was developed uh, in other parts uh, uh, of the region, uh, which could be transferred uh, successfully uh, to our region. I have also noticed your reference uh, to the, the cables and uh, to the pipelines. Eastern Mediterranean will become a region of cables connecting Egypt uh, to Greece uh, to transfer green electricity. It will become a region also of, uh, of pipelines, gas pipelines, which in the future will become uh, uh, hydrogen pipelines, such as uh, EastMed and other projects that uh, are currently considered. 
So these are really uh, key challenges. I know that you cannot stay longer with us. I would therefore like to ask you a question and then feel free to either to stay or to leave as I know that uh, uh, you have a very busy schedule. My question is the following. How these key challenges that we are facing, not only in the Mediterranean, but also globally, will be addressed in COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh. We will be meeting uh, there. I know that uh, UFM will be present there. And of course, we rely on you uh, to become the ambassador of the Mediterranean problem. Uh, you are the unique organization dedicated to the Mediterranean. Of course, in the European Union, we have the neighborhood policy. The Mediterranean is one of the most important European seas. But it is important to see, on the one hand, how can we better develop synergies between uh, UFM and uh, the European Union. And on the other hand, and this is my question, what are your plans uh, uh, in COP27 uh, and how are you planning to highlight those key issues to which you have referred in your speech? Yes, thank you very much, George. Indeed, we do work hand in hand uh, with the European Union neighborhood policy uh, and with their uh, programs. Uh, but for the first time in the history of uh, climate negotiation this year in Sharm el Sheikh, uh, led by UFM and other 12 uh, partners, we will have a Mediterranean pavilion. What does it mean? It means that there's a place open to all the stakeholders in the Mediterranean to have their voice heard, but in a very special perspective, and it is uh, what I referred to before. The Mediterranean has its own identity inside the global climate problem, because we are the second fastest warming region in the world, because uh, our seas, uh, our waters are the fastest warming with all the foreseen impacts. But not only, for all the reasons that I mentioned. So to represent that for the first time in the place of negotiations, where interests are represented by groups that cut the Mediterranean in various parts. In the United Nations system, the Mediterranean is cut in, in three groups, the Arab groups, European Union, and the rest. So that our own region with its own identity was never represented. To do that, we will open an important pavilion in partnership with others. and. Uh, I think I can take this occasion to invite you all to visit us, but also if you have ideas for things to do there, please let us know. In the previous uh, uh, panel, I heard about the uh, coalition of first movers. I would be delighted to have them in our Mediterranean pavilion, as well as I would be delighted to have uh, explanations and illustrations about the plans to connect the shores that are going on in uh, Eastern Mediterranean. Well, uh, thank you very much for this uh, important piece of information. We are very happy to, to have uh, uh, the Mediterranean uh, pavilion in, in, in Sharm el Sheikh. Uh, we will consider it as our, uh, let's say, pavilion where the views of the Mediterranean uh, will be expressed. And we are also grateful to you for having. Uh, conveyed the message that uh, other initiatives, uh, the First Movers uh, Coalition, which is an American initiative uh, to which the ambassadors have referred, uh, or any AMCHAM initiatives, including other initiatives that we have discussed on protecting cultural and natural heritage from climate change impacts, or on uh, promoting uh, the green electricity that uh, Egypt, as a green hub uh, and hydrogen hub later on, will be able to transfer to Greece and subsequently to the European Union through cable. So indeed, uh, we are looking forward to, uh, to this cooperation within uh, your pavilion and of course to, to more uh, cooperation uh, between you and uh, the forum that uh, we are establishing uh, today. This is the first uh, conference on the American chambers of the region uh, Mediterranean Forum, and uh, we are looking uh, forward to a, a closer uh, cooperation with the Union uh, for the uh, Mediterranean, which we can uh, further promote, not only in Sharm el-Sheikh, uh, but also in other events that uh, 
we will have the opportunity to have in the future, one of them being Circle the Med that uh, we are hosting uh, here in, in Athens in November after COP27 with uh, the view to being able to further promote the conclusions and findings of, uh, of this uh, important uh, COP. So, once again... To my camera, but I will stay connected to follow the panel. I will stay connected to follow. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we were very happy to have you with us uh, and uh, keep in touch. Now, uh, we are moving uh, to the next uh, speaker, Mr. Christos Ioakimidis, uh, who is uh, Associate uh, Program Management Officer with UNEP MAP, the MedPol program. UNEP MAP is based uh, here in Athens, and uh, he is the person, uh, uh, the most, I would say, qualified person uh, in that respect, as uh, he represents uh, UNEP MAP, but also uh, Greece, uh, to share with us uh, his views and the views of his organization in relation to the key challenges that uh, we are facing uh, in the Mediterranean. Thank you. Thank you very much to me, Mr. Kremlis, for the invitation and for giving us the opportunity to, to present the, the Mediterranean Action Plan and what we're doing in the Mediterranean. And also congratulations for the organization and for the timing of this event. As, uh, as we speak, we have the International Marine Debris Conference organized in Busan in Korea, and um, many new uh, knowledge and developments are about to be introduced and to be announced. So I believe that this forum is really organized in a very, very uh, timely moment. Um, a lot has been said by the previous uh, uh, speakers on commitments and uh, the United Nations Environment Program and its Mediterranean Action Plan, the so-called Barcelona Convention, which is one of the multilateral environmental agreements that they are placed in the world, uh, focuses for more than 40 years in establishing uh, strong commitments from all the Mediterranean countries, which are our contracting parties, including the European Union. As when it comes to marine litter, the, the, the Barcelona Convention, the unit map, uh, has, been, uh, has introduced the, the subject in matter as of 1996 through the amendment of the land-based protocol. And uh, after that, and starting around 20, 2012, uh, a series of developments, of very strong developments, have been uh, uh, taking place, including the first ever legally binding regional plan on marine litter management that was adopted in 2013 by all Mediterranean countries. Uh, and then uh, recently in December 2021, during COP22, we had the amendment of the regional plan uh, with countries, with all Mediterranean countries committing themselves in a more uh, ambitious uh, program of measures, uh, actions, and initiatives. Uh, of course, all the, um, all the international conventions, they now include marine litter and uh, the, the, Mediterranean, <coughs> the Mediterranean is the region and through the regional plan, through the updated regional plan, where uh, a regional, a coordinated response is addressed throughout the Med uh, at regional, sub-regional and national level. Uh, as I've told you, in, in December 2021 in Antalya, Turkey, where during when we had the, the, the 22nd uh, meeting of our contracting parties, the Mediterranean countries uh, agreed in updating, in improving the, the, the adopted regional plan. Uh, there is a very ambitious uh, ministerial declaration for leaving a pollution and litter-free legacy. There is a new mid-term strategy for the next six, seven years, uh, including a very strong component on marine litter. Uh, we have uh, new appendixes with single-use plastics uh, items of priority, chemicals, additives, uh, timelines, and um, many other novel uh, information. The regional plan and what we do in the Mediterranean, what the Mediterranean countries are doing are very relevant with uh, the, the marine litter policy advances throughout the world, including the agreements the, or the resolutions of UNEA, uh, the, the Global Partnership for Marine Litter, uh, certainly uh, UNEP headquarters, the International Maritime Organization and, uh, and its action plan to address uh, pollution from ships, the Basel Convention, uh, certainly the, 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 all the EU policies, uh, including the Marine Strategy Framework Directive, the, the EU Plastic Strategy, the New Circular Economy uh, Action Plan, the Single EU Plastic Directive, and many others. 
the new elements that they have included that are included in the original plan uh, comprise of new definitions to introduce like the abandoned loss and otherwise, otherwise discarded fishing gear, the best available techniques, the circular economy principle, extended producer responsibility, the fishing gear, the lightweight carrier uh, bags, uh, a, a very ambitious and very uh, well-defined monitoring and assessment component, including for microplastics, either we speak for primary or secondary, and uh, a very broad package for single-use plastics in, in general. Um, four main measures, four scopes are, uh, are covering the measures that are introduced to, through the regional plan. These are economic instruments, circular economy instruments, focusing mainly on plastics, but not only. Uh, the land and, as Mr. Kremli said, also the sea-based sources, which are equally important. Uh, and uh, when it comes to the management, in some cases, it's even more difficult to address them. Uh, there are ambitious targets on plastic waste and microplastics. And uh, as I've told you, there are two new appendices that which clearly define the scope of the problem and the way forward. There, is a, uh, there are a number of additional principles that have been included. I won't exhaust all the list because I know that we are also in a kind of uh, time shortage, but, uh, and it would be nice to have also some time for the discussion, but uh, the phasing out of single-use plastics is uh, something that we really tackle uh, through regional, through, through region-wide guidelines. <clears throat> we have uh, guidelines uh, for phasing out single-use plastics. Uh, there is a tangible example for the case of Tunisia, where a voluntary commitment turned through our intervention to be a national legislation. Uh, we have now uh, new guidelines on focusing on primary single-use plastics coming into the picture, extended producer responsibility, uh, the removal of marine litter, prevention measures, uh, to promote voluntary agreements with plastic, plastic industry. And this is something that the chamber could play a really good uh, f uh, prominent role in, in bringing this contact and uh, sustainable conception and production. The marine protected areas and the effect of marine litter in those areas and in the spam is the, 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 the areas of special Mediterranean importance also, also addressed and also a very uh, uh, ambitious and uh, well-defined monitoring, uh, region-wide monitoring program with indicators and ecological objectives focusing on marine litter. There are a number of achievements that I would like to report to the forum uh, that have been uh, uh, carried out and uh, uh, can be reported as of almost 2013 when we have the, the original plan adopted, that we have national monitoring programs for all Mediterranean countries addressing the, the two major uh, marine litter indicators. There is a lot of work uh, undergoing in, in establishing and in, uh, uh, in the developing the framework for, uh, uh, for documenting the effect of marine litter on biota, which is a very critical and very risky point. It's not so easy to say things when it comes to the effect of marine litter on biota. Uh, the assessment criteria, which are technical aspects like baseline values and threshold values, which help us to understand whether we have a, a healthy or not healthy or a close to, to just the good environmental status, uh, environmental uh, ecosystem or not. Uh, national action plans, program of measures by all the countries, and now the, there is a set of countries which are, have already updated them, and we are now running also as an office, uh, as, uh, as UNEP map, a, a circle of updating the national action plans also for the South Med, including the Eastern Med. We have regulations and supporting the regulations, the national laws for banning single-use plastic in 17 countries, phasing out, as I told you, single-use plastics and microplastic through guidelines, recycling, including legislation and policies, numerous pilots in non-EU countries, which is extremely important. I'm referring to the Adriatic and the, uh, uh, the northern part of Africa. Uh, we have established the regional cooperation platform on, on marine litter since 2016, which is an open-ended group, voluntary group, and I would like also to, to invite the, the chamber to be part of, of the platform. And uh, the first node, the first hub that was the, prepared by UNEP headquarters and the, uh, the GPML, uh, which is a, a central repository of information, and now we are in the phase of where we will try to pilot our contribution to the digital platform that will be introduced now in Busan, will be announced in Busan. I will just spend 30 seconds on the new, on the way forward, and this is the, the, the plastic treaty that is uh, about to come. 
in, in March of this year, 175 countries committed on a legally bind, uh, binding instrument to phase out uh, plastics um, uh, and to address the, plastic, uh, the, the full cycle of plastics uh, and the toxic life, life cycle from the extraction of fossil fuels to the production uh, to end of life. There has been an uh, online working group, uh, online expert working group in May, June 2022, where gave the mandate to the, for the establishment of the Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee that took place, uh, that will took place uh, in November this year in, um, in, uh, in, in South America. Uh, the timeline for the establishment of the, of the treaty is approximately two years and the focus of the treaty will turn into eliminating the unnecessary, uh, unavoidable and problematic plastic products and polymers, uh, as well as to promote safe, safe circular uh, economy and sustainable management practices uh, around the world. The, uh, our position is that the global treaty should be developed by the countries, including a very thorough analysis and discussion on the potential measures that could be uh, successfully delivered. I would like to thank you very much, uh, uh, and I certainly uh, stand available for additional clarification or to address questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Joachimidis, for this very detailed uh, presentation. Indeed, the regional plan on marine litter management has a very, very broad uh, scope, uh, which covers uh, holistically all the, the relevant uh, issues in that respect. It was updated, as you have said, in December uh, 2021. And my question is, um, is uh, this uh, legally binding and how will it be, will it be implemented? Very shortly, please, as uh, time is running. Because also, yeah. Mrs. Zeri, yeah, I would, uh, so the, the regional plan is legally binding. The, the regional planning is legally binding since uh, 2013. And what does this mean? It means that the countries have uh, agreed to commit and commit themselves to implement a series of actions, a series of activities with a focus on marine litter. How this is monitored through the, and this is a novelty that we have in the Mediterranean, the regional plan is not just a, a wish list of actions uh, for the countries to, to select what they like to do or what they prefer to do. There is a, a timetable, a work plan at the end uh, is, uh, is annexed to the legally binding regional plan where it says this activity will be implemented by 2023 or 24, 25, 2030. And this is our overall guide to achieve this commitment, we, uh, our, our office, in order to achieve this commitment, we are using uh, funds from the Mediterranean Trust Fund, which is the core funds of the Secretary, but there are also uh, quite numerous and quite significant external uh, resources that are secured and they are supporting ourselves uh, and the countries, most importantly, uh, to, to this goal. Thank you. Thank you. And another a question on the international legally binding instrument. We are looking forward uh, to it, uh, to, to ban uh, plastic pollution uh, uh, world, uh, world by, uh, worldwide. Uh, how would the regional sea conventions, we have uh, the Barcelona Convention for uh, our um, Mediterranean Sea Basin, but we have also OSPAR, we have uh, other seas, the Black Sea Convention. How these conventions could contribute uh, to this legally binding instrument, and how could this legally binding instrument be mainstreamed uh, to the requirements of these conventions, which are prior, of course, a new instrument always amends prior legal uh, instruments, but uh, the synergies and the interaction is uh, very important. Uh, the plan is that the, 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 global, uh, the global instrument will uh, support the work that is done by the regional seas and uh, is, won't come to, to replace them. This is one, uh, one aspect. Uh, the regional seas around the world, and specifically around the European seas, which is HELCOM, OSPAR, uh, UNEPMAP, and the Black Sea Commission, they are uh, participating to this process, and the, all the experience and lessons learned and best practices that have been used in those regions and around the world are now feeding into the input that uh, uh, will uh, uh, be diluted to extract the provisions of the legally binding instrument. Uh, when it comes to the implementation, uh, certainly the regional seas are well placed to, to play this role because uh, the regional seas, they know the, the regional, sub-regional, national specificities 
we, I mean the regional seas, uh, are implementing activities, on the ground activities, on the countries, so they are very, very well placed to extract the big picture into a real action into the national context. Thank you. Thank you. I would like now to give the floor to the last but not least uh, speaker of our panel, uh, Ms. Christina Zeri, who is a chemist, uh, oceanographer, uh, working for the Institute of uh, Oceanography, which is uh, the Hellenic Center in the, the Hellenic Center for Marine uh, Research. I understand that you have a PowerPoint uh, presentation, so the floor is yours. Without ado. Thank you very much, Mr. Kremlis, and uh, I also thank the Chamber for the invitation today and the opportunity that we gave to the Hellenic Center for Marine Research uh, to to be here uh, in this uh, uh, forum. So, in the short time frame of my presentation, I will try to give you, to provide you some information on the magnitude of the problem of marine litter and plastics pollution in the Mediterranean Sea, which is considered a hotspot area for this kind of pollution. Why? Because of its high coastal uh, population, which reaches 150 million inhabitants along its uh, coast. Uh, um, the Mediterranean hosts one third of the world's tourism and 15% of the global shipping activity. So these parameters combined with uh, the enclosed character of the basin, uh, the presence of uh, various larger rivers and also uh, specific uh, uh, patterns of the sea surface circulation uh, lead to uh, the accumulation of litter within, uh, within it, within the basin. And of course, we know uh, that uh, when uh, plastics and marine litter reach the marine environment from various pathways, they are found everywhere. They are found in all marine compartments, which means that they are found floating on the sea surface. And then they may, may be washed ashore on beaches, or they may lose their buoyancy and eventually be deposited on the deep seafloor. Uh, let alone that uh, if we talk about microplastics and we know that we, they are found also uh, in, uh, uh, the, uh, in the stomachs of the animals. So they're literally found everywhere. And they are measured, and scientific-wise, uh, we measure both big uh, items, macroplastics and microplastics, in all these compartments. And of course, uh, the beach environment is the one which is uh, best uh, studied because of the ease of access. Here in this uh, bar chart, you can see um, median uh, values of uh, beach litter items found on the European beaches. And these are separated in the various uh, European uh, seas. And we see that the Mediterranean Sea uh, has the highest uh, uh, median values, about uh, uh, 270 items per 100 meters of coast. Uh, and in the last uh, set of columns, you see the uh, relevant data for Greece. Um, at the same time, uh, and only very recently, uh, for this uh, type of litter, for beach litter, we have the adoption of the first uh, threshold value on the EU level, as Christos also mentioned. Um, this value, which is uh, shown here with the uh, uh, red line, is uh, corresponds to 20 items per 100 meters, and it is supposed that uh, the coastlines, which have uh, values of beach litter below the 20 items, are considered in good situation, in good environmental status, are considered clean. The respective value from the point of the Barcelona Convention for the Mediterranean areas is uh, a little bit higher, 130 items. However, we see that uh, most of the uh, European areas, and in particular the Mediterranean and also our country, we st still have uh, a lot of uh, uh, efforts uh, to make in order to reach this, uh, these thresholds. Here you have uh, a comparison of uh, a beach litter found in Italy and in Greece, and we see uh, that there are uh, quite uh, uh, well compared the data sets. So one important point here is that uh, about half of the items found on beaches are single-use plastics. We have 11% per of uh, fishing uh, relating, uh, related uh, material and uh, uh, a quite high and important 20% uh, uh, of fragments 
un un unidentified uh, uh, fragments and pieces of plastics, which is uh, uh, the percent which is uh, getting higher and higher uh, during the years. Uh, of course, as we, we all know, marine litter is not just one parameter. It consists of uh, several uh, types of items. So we are interested also in the qualitative uh, uh, composition of marine litter. And this gives us uh, very important information and guide us in order to design uh, our measures uh, and in order to target specific uh, items and help us reach faster uh, the desired uh, thresholds. When it comes to marine litter found on the seafloor, most data come from, uh, uh, from fishing grounds because uh, sampling for seafloor litter uh, is, uh, rely, relies uh, on, uh, uh, on trolling activities. So along the fishing grounds of the Mediterranean Sea, we see some areas of accumulation of litter like the Gulf of Lyons or uh, the coasts of the Croatia and Albania in Adriatic Sea, and also the, south, uh, the central and south uh, uh, Aegean. Uh, on average, we have about uh, 100 items per square kilometer. And here you see a quite different uh, um, uh, composition of marine litter found on the seafloor. You see, we have heavy material, heavy stuff, but we also have small pieces of age, uh, fragmented uh, um, uh, waste and packaging material. And here in this uh, photograph, you can see a fish, a fish catch, which comes on board, and you see that uh, uh, along with fish, there's a lot of uh, plastics and uh, waste uh, um, um, trolled. And uh, if we zoom in in the Aegean, Again, we see that we are very close, so the, the, the data on fishing grounds are, uh, are very close to the uh, Mediterranean average, a little bit higher. However, litter does not stay on the seafloor. Uh, it may be uh, transported to deeper areas, it does not stay on the fishing grounds. Uh, it can be transported uh, by the help of uh, uh, bottom currents uh, to deep canyons. And there it accumulates. And it is also a very difficult uh, area to recover litter from these places. And the least, of course, the least studied because of uh, technical difficulties. One of the recent studies by Hernandez et al. has shown that in the Western Mediterranean canyon, uh, marine litter concentrations are two orders of magnitude uh, higher than those found on fishing grounds and about uh, uh, two times higher than respected uh, um, uh, data uh, recorded in the global ocean canyons. Um, just to show you uh, some photographs from uh, our ROVs in the 1,000 meters depth in the Ionian Sea, where you see uh, Byzantine and Venetian uh, shipwrecks uh, found today uh, along with uh, plastic remnants of our uh, uh, civilization, our modern civilization. The issue of microplastics. We all know that microplastics are, um, are the result of uh, fragmentation of large plastic items uh, under the, when found in the environment and uh, under the influence of the solar radi radiation, but they are also uh, formed during the life cycle of materials and uh, uh, during the use and the wearing out of materials. In this uh, projection, it is shown that uh, if, for example, in the scenario that uh, all microplastics and plastics emissions to the environment stop as of today, uh, then uh, in uh, 2000, until the year 2050, the emissions would have reached, uh, the, the total amount of microplastics found on the sea surface would have reached 1.5 million tons of plastics. And of course, if we continue with business as usual, these figures are estimated to uh, overcome the 2 million tons of plastics uh, floating on the sea surface of the oceans. So for the Mediterranean Sea, um, we know that uh, on average, there are 260,000 items of microplastics floating on the surface um, of the basin. And these are very well comparable to the large oceanic gyres. 
we have some variability between the Western and Eastern Mediterranean, and especially it seems that the Aegean Sea has shows lowest uh, concentrations of floating microplastics, which is related, of course, to specific uh, natural uh, uh, factors, the long coastlines and the um, uh, and the, the ocean currents. It is interesting to see that uh, this, uh, uh, yes, I'm about to, to finish only two slides. <laughs> it is interesting to note that uh, 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 this difference between the Western and Eastern Mediterranean in floating microplastics are the, uh, reflected also in the uh, microplastics uh, occurrence found in various fish species. Here you see Western Mediterranean with much higher uh, microplastics found in stomachs. Uh, in, in contrast to the Eastern Mediterranean. However, the impacts of uh, marine uh, litter and microplastics on the ecosystems are still not fully understood. Um, we have not seen uh, an acute uh, toxicity of microplastics, microplastics in, inge ingested uh, by, uh, by fish on the organism level. However, we do know that they uh, interfere with the natural biogeochemical cycles and in particular with the carbon cycle and they play a key role uh, regarding the, our overall exposure to chemicals. And of course, these points are uh, very much relevant to the Mediterranean Sea because, uh, as we know, it hosts about 11% of the world's uh, marine uh, species. So I hope I provided uh, an idea of the magnitude and the complexity of the problem, um, and uh, which needs uh, multi-actor engagement uh, in order to reach to sound solutions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Zeri, for this uh, illustrative uh, presentation uh, showing uh, how worrying uh, the situation is uh, in Eastern Mediterranean, but also in the Mediterranean uh, uh, as regards uh, pollution, uh, litter and microplastics. It is really very worrying and uh, I was uh, really uh, worried about the situation in, in Greece uh, where the graphs uh, show that uh, we, we are exceeding uh, the, the average uh, uh, pollution uh, thresholds. And of course, uh, I saw that uh, the European Union threshold is very stringent and very low. The UNEP one is, uh, uh, is higher, but uh, we are far beyond it. So my short question is, how can we, from this very high level of pollution, reach the very low stringent uh, standard that is uh, set uh, by the European Union as we are a European Union uh, member state, very briefly, and the other uh, as the uh, directive of the European Union on single-use plastics is now fully applicable in Greece through a piece of national legislation, a Greek law, have we seen since uh, last, last year, I mean a year and a half, when it started uh, being enforced. Have we seen any difference? Uh, do you have any data in that respect? Yes, now regarding your first... Uh, we, we, we have two minutes left. Okay. <laughs> regarding your first uh, question, of course, this is a challenge. It is indeed a very stringent uh, uh, threshold and probably we will not uh, see it in the, in the near uh, future because uh, the problem is not just, uh, we measure everything, not only large items and intact uh, materials, but also fragments, as I, I, I mentioned. And, this, uh, uh, and, and, and there is a key, this is a key issue uh, in order to reach uh, uh, the threshold. And this is why we need not only um, cleanups or cleaning technologies, end of pipe uh, technologies and solutions. We really, really need uh, uh, solutions that take into consideration the circularity of the materials and also to change uh, our uh, consuming uh, habits. Um, now the second, uh, regarding your second uh, question, which is related also to the first, uh, what we can see so far, uh, we cannot see a change on the single-use plastics. That will be a very, very short uh, period of uh, uh, data acquisition. But for the plastic bags, we may say that we, we do not find intact plastic bags uh, in the marine environment. 
Uh, but as I said before, uh, we still find the pieces of them. And then, uh, for example, in one of our uh, uh, surveys uh, some, a couple of years ago, we found a piece of a, a popcorn uh, packaging uh, uh, with, uh, with drachmas on. The price was in drachmas on it. It was written in drachmas. So under you understand. <laughs> <laughs> you understand how long does it take uh, uh, to actually see a, a real uh, difference. But that doesn't mean that we should not do the efforts. It means that we should have done them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank On plastic bags, we can see already the difference. Yes. And I believe that uh, there is a slow improvement of the, the culture of the people exactly. following the, exactly. the single plastic uh, um, directive and uh, legislation. Thank you very much, uh, both of you. Thank you to Gramenos for this interesting panel. And, uh, and now time has come for the next panel to, to join us.